Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. And today I'm gonna to talk all about what I do for my tires in terms of how I repair them if they get damaged and what I carry for spare parts in terms of tires and wheels so that I can keep rolling. And a lot of people are really shocked to hear that I only carried the one spare tire and one spare wheel when I drove all the way around Africa. So, you know, that's a controversial thing to do. And if you're wondering how I negated the risk of, you know, having a flat tire that I wasn't able to repair, stick around, I'll get into all the details right now. So as I said, I only carried the one spare tire and wheel for my 54,000 mile drive all the way around Africa. And that's a controversial thing to do. I think especially South Africans and Australians who've been overlanding since vehicles were invented, they rely heavily on always having two spare tires. It's really common you see safari vehicles that have two massive spare tires and wheels mounted on the back. And you know, I kind of think that, again, that's a holdover from back in the 70s and the 80s when tires really weren't up to the challenge. And it's especially a thing when you really overload your vehicles and you push the tires beyond their load limit. So, you know, given that it's 2020, tire technology has come a really long way and load ratings, you know, these things are E-load rated. They can carry a lot of weight. So I think if you're careful and you manage your tire pressures and you don't do anything ridiculous, there's no reason to think that you're gonna have a complete tire failure. Yes, punctures are a thing, they happen, we'll get to that in a minute, but in terms of blowing out a sidewall or destroying a tire so badly that you can't use it, I think that's really uncommon these days. Yeah, maybe rock crawlers, they kind of, they can tear a sidewall on a rock. That is something to be mindful of when you're out overlanding. But again, it's not something that happens very often. And I think with one spare tire and wheel and then a few key elements so you can repair them and a few spares, you don't need to carry two spares on your massive overland expedition. When it comes to your tires, the first thing that I recommend everybody have in their vehicle is a quality air compressor. So here I've got the little ARB single compressor and I've talked at length about why I have the single and I don't have the dual. So you can check out my other video about that. But the reason I really recommend you have an air compressor, not only so you can deal with flat tires, which can be a problem and we'll cover that, but it's more so that you can confidently air down your tires, knowing that you can air them back up again later. So one of the greatest ways we can reduce wear and tear on our vehicle and increase tire life so that they're not getting beat up so badly is to air down our tires when the going gets rough. So if I'm on a rough gravel road and I know it's only going to be half an hour, sometimes I'm a bit lazy and I don't air down, but when I know it's going to be hours and hours or days and days, absolutely, I take the time, I get out and I air down all of my tires. Usually I go down to something around 24 PSI, my Jeep's pretty heavy, so I don't have to go down really low. Unless I'm seriously off-roading in low range, then I might go down as low as about 18. Or sometimes when I was on the deep sand in Namibia and South Africa, I would go down to about 10 PSI. At that though, I have to be a little bit careful that I won't pull the tires off the beads of the rim. I don't have beadlock wheels, not something I'm interested in. But I'm getting sidetracked here. Having an air compressor is such a powerful thing so you know that after you've aired down your tires, you can go on your rough road, but when you get back to a paved road, you can bring your tires back up to the correct pressure. The fastest way to destroy modern tires is drive on a paved road at high speed with much too low tire pressures. So if I was to drive on the highway at 24 PSI, given how heavy my Jeep is, these tires would overheat really quickly and in a matter of half an hour, I could destroy them and you know I'd have to replace all four tires. So airing up is a must, which means having a quality air compressor. I think if you're going further away than walking distance from you know civilization, having a quality air compressor, absolutely a must. While we're on the topic of airing up and down our tires, something else we really need is a quality tire gauge. So if you don't know what pressure your tires are, you can't know that you're in the right range for the kind of driving you're doing. So I just have this simple manual gauge, you know, you have to push it on the tire, 
but I really like this little guy because it's small and light and it's accurate. And I know lots of people now, they have the digital version that's kind of on the end of your air up hose. And I've never liked that as much because it's big and bulky. It has to use batteries, which when your batteries die and you're in the Congo, well, that's not so good. And it also means you have to get out the whole hose and all of that sort of paraphernalia just to check your tire pressures. Whereas I keep this under my driver's seat and I can jump out anytime I want to check the pressures. And this has the little thing on the side of it so that I can lower pressures as well. So I can do that really quickly and easily, which means I'm more likely to do it more often, which is a good thing so that I'm constantly running the correct pressures instead of getting lazy and not airing down when I should. So being able to air up your tires is great, but what do I do in the event of a flat tire? And I definitely have had them. From Alaska to Argentina, I was running really cheap tires and I had 16 flat tires in those 40,000 miles. And all the way around Africa, I had three flat tires. Uh, and they were always nails or screws or something like that embedded in the tread of the tire. So to fix flat tires like that, I carry a plug repair kit. And I have the kit from ARB, which works really well. And actually I filmed a video when I was in Botswana actually using the kit when I fixed one of my flats there. So this works really well for any kind of damage that's on the tread and anything that's kind of a hole, you know, from like a nail or a screw or something like that. And actually friends had sidewall damage while we were in the Congo and my friend Didi, he managed to stuff two of these big plugs into the hole that was in his sidewall and it worked perfectly fine and he drove on it for another 10,000 miles or so until he bought new tires way down in Southern Africa. So these plugs are actually quite versatile and they can solve a lot of problems that you have. So the ARB kit comes with everything you need, the tools to actually put the plugs in the hole, the plugs themselves, and it comes with a little container here of goodies that's really helpful. This has spare valve inserts. It has the little tool to be able to dismantle the valve. It has spare valve caps, kind of like a little, you know, magic box of everything you need to deal with damaged tires. So I really recommend it. It's been a great kit for me. As well as the ARB kit, I've also got my own little Tupperware here of spares that I like to carry for wheels and tires. So last time I was getting my tires mounted at the tire shop, I asked the guys and they just threw in a whole bunch of spare valves for me. So this way I can replace a valve if something really goes wrong. This is the outer and the inner. And to go along with that, I've got the special tool that you use to pull the valve off the rim. So you thread this on and then you can use leverage to actually get it out of the rim. Just another tool that I have in my box. As well as the valves, I also have spare lugs for my Jeep. So when I was in Alaska, I actually snapped one of these once when I was trying to get a wheel off. And you know, I would have been in big trouble if I didn't carry spares. So I looked into it and the wheel studs or the lugs for this Jeep, they're all common front to rear. So I only carry four of these. And in fact, all the way around Africa, I never used one, but they're nice to have. And as well as that, I have a couple of spare uh, lug nuts as well, or, you know, just the bolts that hold the wheels on. Because I put lock nuts on this, I wound up with four spares, and so those are now in here. Just in case one gets cross-threaded or one gets lost or something, really nice to have four. So those are the spares, and those are the things that I carry to be able to repair a tire. Another thing that I've seen, uh, a thread on Expedition Portal, where a guy actually sewed up a tear in his sidewall using a big needle and some steel braid. He did the best job he could to sew it, and then he covered it in glue on the inside and the outside to make it airtight. And it actually worked well, and he drove on it for quite a distance. That's something I'd love to look into, although the big challenge there is, it means you have to get the tire off the rim. And if you're out remote, you're gonna to have to carry tire levers to do this so you can do it with your hands instead of the big machine at the tire shop. And those tire levers, they're kind of large and heavy. So I've always debated about whether I should carry them or not. Currently I don't, so I don't have any ability to get the tires off the rims. Maybe it's something I would do in the future, but given how unlikely sidewall damage is, it's not something I'm really prioritizing for the next time. 
So I hope that video has been helpful and I hope it gets you thinking about what you need to carry if you're heading out remote and getting away from civilization. So as always, if this has been helpful, do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. I have to give a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. They're helping to make these videos come to life so I can keep teaching you guys everything that I've learned from my years on the road and I can help you get out there on the road and have your own massive adventures. So until next time, stay safe out there. Maybe I'll bump into you on the road.